Every year as we approach the Super Bowl, you start to see football-themed food and products everywhere. It's more like a national holiday than a sporting event, one that involves watching, evaluating, and discussing television commercials. This tradition has turned the Super Bowl into the championship of advertising. Super Bowl 18 changed everything. Jobs said, I need an ad to announce the advent of Macintosh that will stop the world in its tracks. The media director of Shaite, Hank Antos, said there's only one place you can run this, the Super Bowl. And Steve Jobs naturally said, I don't know a single person who watches the Super Bowl. And I said, of course you don't, you're Steve Jobs. We shall prevail. To be that brave, to go on such a platform as the Super Bowl to do that ad, for me, that's, that was always just, you know, brilliant. Everything was changed with Apple in 1984. It became an event. TV networks discovered an opportunity to expand the audience beyond just football fans, and of course, make more money. The Super Bowl became the ultimate advertising showdown, with advertisers paying huge amounts to play. This year, 30-second spots cost as much as $5.6 million. These are the secrets of the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> One, be funny, intelligently funny. Two, do not try to sell too hard, or sell hard at all. Awful. Number three is, you know, is not to fail in front of 300 well, billion, billion people. Billion people. <laughs> in the past, we, we used to plan for things like in four, four months in advance, six months in advance. Now we change things overnight. Like last Friday, we decided to change the entire Super Bowl launch plans for Bud Light, and we just did it. What do you do for maximum impact? I think the joke is you use animals. Whenever I see the way people react to the Clydesdales, whenever they see a Clydesdale, whenever they, they're in front of a Clydesdale, it's an object of admiration. Like, they, 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 their eyes light up and they feel like, wow. I don't know why they show the movie spots. I mean, you know. They, they must work, though, because look, at, there are more and more of them. I know. More I know. and more. They're just spots. Studies have shown that the economics do work, and movies with trailers that air during the Super Bowl were found to boost opening weekend sales by more than twice the cost of the ad time. A Stanford study showed that Budweiser's Super Bowl ads boosted its sales by almost twice what they spent on the commercials. The CFO of, of PepsiCo, uh, Hugh Johnston, actually gave the commercials on the Super Bowl credit for a 5.2% increase in sales. Did you say okay? No, no, no. Okay. The price of participating in this advertising showcase continues to climb even though viewership of the Super Bowl has fallen off. You cannot ignore the Super Bowl. There's just, the stage is just too big. You can't. It's, there was a time when you go, well, it's expensive. Is it worth it? It's worth it. It's rare to see a country that has a moment like this when the whole nation stops in front of a, t uh, in front of a TV set to really watch the game. This is one thing. But I think Super Bowl brings something else on top of this, which is the fact that people are willing to see the commercials. The pressure of doing something great has gotten greater with every year. You know, it costs so much money. So many people are seeing it. Now people are sharing it. We're talking about it before the game and after the game. Yeah. So there's more pressure to have it be good, yeah. I think. Last year, the major Super Bowl commercials that were released before the game were already watched over 100 million times online by Friday before the game, according to a company that tracked the views across many different platforms. And social media engagement around the advertising has completely changed the game. AB InBev decided to release two Bud Light Seltzer ads featuring Post Malone a few days before the game and let the audience decide which one will get the spot, which is helping both ads rack up views online. Tip initiated. Tastes like mango! Yeah! So why Post Malone? Not only because he's great on, on helping us drive cultural conversations, but also because he's known as being a huge Bud Light fan. And then we said, have you ever tried this Bud Light Seltzer? He said, no. Are you thinking about trying this? He said, no. <laughs> so why don't you try this and, and tell us how you, how you feel? Because this is what's going to happen to a lot of people. After we saw the assets ready, we started talking to consumers. And it was amazing because thankfully the response was overwhelmingly positive. But we saw people saying, we love the number one. No, 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 the number two is much better. Then we started to have internal conversations. Should we stick to the plan? Should they flip it and put number two first? 
And then last Friday, we said, you know what? Let's invite consumers to help us decide. It may be the food, the actual game, or the commercials, but the Super Bowl is one TV event that still commands a huge live audience. While only one team can win the game, there's always a few brands that steal the show. Here's Mountain Dew Zero. I am thirsty.